Hi, my name is Darren Lithgow. I'm the author of TNG. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about importing a GEDCOM file and also manually entering data. So here's a brand new uh, instance of TNG 11. I don't have any data there yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is import a GEDCOM file. You see up here, that's my important task. So I click on import and right near the top you see I have the option to choose a file from my computer or one that may I, I may have already put up on the website. So let's, uh, I think I did actually put one up there earlier so I'm going to select one this way. Yep, there it is. So I select that file and right underneath that I have a, an option about custom event types. Now there are a few events that uh, TNG calls standard and those are birth, marriage, death, a few, few others, and those are always imported. But everything else, um, TNG calls custom event types. So you need to decide uh, which of those you'd like to keep and which you'd like to ignore. So for a brand new file, you can check this option and have TNG automatically ex accept all new custom event types that are included in that file. Then later you can go over here to custom event types and turn off the ones that you don't really want to see if there are any. This option over here allows you to just do that. This will scrape through your GEDCOM file and only import the custom event types that are new if you want. But we don't have any data and data is what we want so let's go this way. We're going to import the file and all its data and accept any new custom event types that happen to be there. The next thing is to choose a tree. Now, most of you probably only have one tree, and if you don't even have any trees yet, you click this button right here, and you can create a new tree while, right while you're there without having to go anywhere else. A tree is just a container to hold your information. So once you've got a tree selected, now come down and look in the Replace Options. So if you've already imported data before, you uh, have a choice to make as to what this data will do. Will it replace everything you've got uh, or something else? So this all current data, uh, what that does is first deletes everything you've got, all your names and uh, families and sources, and then imports the new file in place of that. So this is a good option if you uh, know that you've deleted some records uh, in your desktop software and now you're importing that you want those records to be gone on your website so the way to do that is to delete everything that's there now and then import the new file the second option here matching records only that doesn't do a delete first so you import your file then anything that matches TNG will overwrite uh, it will take what's in your file and overwrite what's already in your database but anything that is deleted in your file, uh, but is on your website, that will stay. So something to think about there. These other two options, do not replace any data, uh, that's fairly self-explanatory. If TNG finds a match in your file for anything already in the database, it will not replace it. It will only add new things. Append is something you would want to use if your, say your Aunt Martha gave you uh, a few new generations to add to your genealogy, you would want to append this record because you don't know if Aunt Martha's data is using the same IDs that you're already using. So if you import that without using append, it might um, ruin your data. You might find yourself married to your cousin or whatnot because all the IDs have been stepped on by other records. Uh, so when you use append, it will renumber all of Aunt Martha's IDs uh, so that they don't conflict with yours. And then you can use the merge tool to uh, eliminate duplicates and uh, straighten everything out. Okay, so for this demonstration, I'm using all current data. There are a few more options you can uh, look at down here, like if you want to uppercase all the surnames, if you have media in your records, or uh, or uh, place data like latitude longitude. I should say about the media, if you're going to import media, the media in your GEDCOM file will just be references. The actual photos themselves will not be there. When you do an import of this, TNG will set up all those photo records. It will put links in the database, 
but you will need to use your FTP program to upload all the actual media files to the photos folder on your website in order for those to match up. Okay, so I think we're ready to import. I'm going to click import data and what you should see next is a pop-up in the middle of the screen that uh, shows the files being uploaded and then uh, the progress as the records are put into the database. And see there weren't too many so it popped right in, 271 people in this file. And now I can delete the GEDCOM file if I want because TNG no longer needs it after the records have been imported. There are also more options I can look at. So if I click here, I go to a different page where it shows me a few things I can run now on the data. Like suppose your desktop program didn't sort the children or the spouses. You can uh, uh, click these buttons to take care of that. Look at the help for this page to learn more about all the other options you see here. Anyway, now that we've imported our data, we could go over to People. I already did a search before, so I had to reset. Now you can see all the people that I just imported. They're all there. All the families, too. So everything's cool. But now suppose you didn't have a JETCOM file. Let's, uh, let's go back and reset. So I'm going to go to my trees and clear this tree out. So now I've got nobody again. So suppose I'm starting from scratch without a JEDCOM file. Some people say to me, well, what should I do first? And it really doesn't matter. Some people like to come to people and enter all the people first and then join them later into families. Or some people like to start with families, create a family and then just add the people uh, as you go. And it's important to realize you know, you, when you do, the difference between the people and families. So. Uh, I can add myself and my wife and my children, but they're not linked together in any way until I create a family for them. So let's do it that way. We'll go into Families, let's say Add New, and here I uh, am able to add a father, a mother. I can use the Find button to find someone that may already be in my database and have them go be the father in this family. Or I could click Create and then add a new person right here. So let's uh, add somebody. Like I would, let's add a mysterious person named Donald Smith. We'll give him the birthday of, let's call it 1900. Because there he is. Now he's been created and he's the father in our family. And now I can create a, a wife uh, or an add marriage date. Let's say I don't know the wife at this point, but I, maybe I'll just, I'll just enter a marriage date. I know it's from Boston, but I can't remember the rest, so I click here and say, find me all the places with Boston. Oh yeah, that's what I want. And save. So now it'll let me edit this family again. At this point, you know, I can maybe I'll remember who the mother is, and I can add that here, um, or I can add children. So um, suppose I entered the mother separately. Maybe I came over here to people, and I did add new. Let's add her here. And uh, let's see, I'll take off the living. She was born March 10.01. Also in Boston. Well, let's make her from Billings. Okay. So now I have a record for her. Now I can go back to families. And here's a family with Donald Smith. And I'll edit that. And I'll say, okay, let's find. I remember her name was Jones. There she is. So now she's the mother. Let's uh, uh, add some children. I don't have any people, so let's create one now. Let's make this date 23, just to be consistent. Hey, so now I have one child. Let's add another one while I'm here. Uh, 
make this be a girl. Okay, so now I've got two children and I can drag them around, change the order if I need to. And there's our, our family is complete. Okay, well another way that you could have done this is suppose you were editing uh, the individual records under people. And here under Donald, you see right now we already have a spouse, but if we didn't have a spouse yet, we could come and click here and say, click on this add new, and that would bring us to a new family page with Donald as the father. Now, it's important to also remember that you know, if someone has multiple spouses, they will need multiple family records. Like my great-grandfather, James Lithgow, was married four different times. So I have four different family records with James Lithgow as the father in each one. And I have children for each of those unions listed with each one. And so that's something you can do to when you're editing the individual. You can also, let's go back there, you'll notice down here there's a section for parents. And I don't have any parents yet for Donald. So I click on him, on add new there, and now I have a family where I can add a father and a mother, and once I save it, Donald will be one of the children in that family. I could have just come here and created a new family and then selected Donald as one of the children, and it would have been the same thing. So you can see there are a variety of different ways that you can add people and families and link them all together. Hopefully this has given you an idea of how you can do that. There really isn't any right way to do it, just however you feel comfortable. Just make sure that you have the right number of families for everyone and that um, the right number of parents. You know, here you see I have uh, children David and Martha for this family. Let's suppose I'm in people and I decide to add a new person. Let's say Richard Smith. And I know that he is um, also a child of Donald and Julie. Now I might be tempted down here to say click add new on Richard and then choose Donald and Julie as his parents. But then I'm going to have two different families, with Richard as child in one and uh, David and Martha as children in the other. So if you know the family already exists, don't do it this way. Instead, come to Families, Edit Donald's Family, go down to Children, click Find, do a search. There's Richard. Now he's a child in the right family. I can drag him up to his proper birth order and save. Okay, well, I hope that helps a little bit and that uh, you've got a bit of a handle now on ad adding people and families to your site. Thanks for watching.